Hello, I'm Naomi Gigon. You're watching News Pulse on Hornbill TV, and these are the headlines. The opposition less Naglin government has been renamed United Democratic Alliance. Naglin Chief Minister Nifurio tweeted about the change in the nomenclature of the government. Navindra Narayan Ravi sworn in as the 26th Governor of Tamil Nadu on Saturday. He succeeded Banwari Lal Burohit, who has been appointed as the Governor of Punjab and the Administrator of the Union Territory of Chandikar. Captain Amarinder Singh resigned as the Punjab Chief Minister on Saturday amid the ongoing political tussle with Navjot Singh Situ, who was recently appointed as the Chief of the Congress Punjab Unit. Addressing a press conference at the gate of the Raj Pawan, the 79-year-old said he felt humiliated. BJP MP and former minister Pabul Supriyo, who recently announced that he was quitting politics, joined the Trinamool Congress in Kolkata on Saturday. Now for the news in details. The opposition-less Naglin government has been renamed United Democratic Alliance. Naglin Chief Minister Nifirio tweeted about a change in the nomenclature of the government. The, the nomenclature of United Democratic Alliance for the opposition-less government in Naglin has been unanimously resolved by the legislators and party leaders of the Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party, Paradia Janata Party, Naga People's Front and independent members of the Naglin Legislative Assembly, Rio tweeted. Chief Secretary of Naglin, J. Alam, today visited Christian Institute of Health Sciences and Research and inspected the ongoing construction of new COVID-19 hospital. Deputy Commissioner of Dimapur, Rajesh Sondura Rajan, Chief Medical Officer of Dimapur, Dr. Moatam Jin, and Director of CIHSR, Dr. Sedevi Angami, were also present at the site. After inspecting the construction, Alam said that he is very impressed by the work so far. He also said that the COVID building construction is expected to be completed in a matter of three to four weeks. Let's have a look at the detail from our reporter, Kekrisen Ogiho. Right now we are here at CIHSR Dimapu and behind me you can see the new COVID-19 hospital construction. And today the Chief Secretary of Nagalan will be coming and inspecting on the, on the new COVID-19 hospital. And not just that, but he'll also be giving us a press briefing on what he feels about the construction that is going on right now and also when can we expect the full functioning of the COVID-19 hospital at CIHSR. You already know the background under which uh this acute care hospital block was actually envisaged and planned. The work had, had started from 28th of June. So we are into the third month now. I am quite happy with the progress that has been made in a very short time. We were initially slightly skeptical that we will actually be able to do it so fast. But uh, I am really happy. The entire government machinery who are involved in decision making and the people who are there on the ground who are supervising and monitoring the project and the partner, our partners implementing agency. I think they are working day and night and uh, we are now seeing that um, I think within a month, within the next three to four weeks, we should be able to inaugurate the hospital. I am told all the equipment etc. has already come barring uh, one or two major machines which are on the way. So it's only a matter of installation now. Uh, this 200 bedded facility being added to CIHSR will almost double their capacity. Similarly we are also adding beds to Dimapur hospital. Then there is another addition of 100 beds in the referral hospital of police complex, the Chumukidima. So on the whole, these 350 beds will be added to the hospital bed capacity in Dimapur. The facilities being provided here can be compared with any, any of the best hospitals in the country. I am told that the work is going on on a 24-hour basis and uh, more than 200 people are already deployed there. 
So I think it should be possible to finish it within a month's time. After inspecting the construction of the new COVID-19 hospital at CIHSR, the Chief Secretary of Nagaland in the press briefing stated that he is very impressed with the construction going on so far and he said that the hospital equipment and the construction, if completed, can be compared to some of the best hospitals in Nagaland. He also showed his special appreciation to the aggregate team led by Dr. Sedevi and the engineers, both CIHSR engineers and the government engineers and all the people who are behind the construction of the new COVID-19 hospital and he also said that in the coming in a, in a matter of three to four weeks we can expect the completion of the COVID-19 hospital at CIHSR. I am reporter Kekrisi Nyukyohua with camera person Johnson for Hornbill TV. Former Special Director of the Intelligence Bureau AK Mishra who is reportedly zoned by the government of India to take over as the interlocutor of the Naga peace talks arrives here in Dimabur airport today. No official announcement has been made by the center. However, sources informed that Mishra will take over as the interlocutor from former Naglin governor Arun Ravi. According to sources, Mishra will hold meeting with NSC and IM leaders on September 20. To know more details about the development in the Naga peace process, we have our assistant editor Bidosu over the phone with us. Hello, Bito. Today, Eke Mishra, who is reportedly to be the interlocutor of the Naga Peace Talks, has arrived in Dimabur, and there are many speculations on what is on the cards. It has been almost two years that uh, there was no talks between the center and the negotiating group. And now, with Mishra's arrival into the state, what further development can we expect on the Naga Peace Talks? Yes. Uh Akshay Kumar Mishra, who is a 1985 IPS from Rajasthan, mm -hmm. uh, who recently retired from uh, uh, IB, Intelligence Bureau, has been uh, there as a broker for more than a year. Since uh, NSNIM refused to talk to Raden Ravi, uh, and it's been more than a year, despite of uh, having this accord being signed, uh, the difference between NSNIM and then Raden Ravi, the interlocutor, who was then. Uh, between uh, these two groups that uh, uh, R.N. Ravi refused to barge in with the demand of uh, plague and constitution for the press. So, since the NIM, innocent IM that had refused to talk to Ravi for more than a year, so the Ministry of Home Affairs had to speak in, uh, had to rope in this Akshay Kumar Mishra, A.K. Mishra, mm. and he had been there as a broker for more than a year. So, today, uh, currently, he arrived at this afternoon at the airport, and there was there there was a, a little small program of uh, welcoming him from the uh, innocent IM pro groups. So uh, we are expecting a meeting, though it, it has not been finalized yet, but uh, we are expecting a meeting in a day or two. Okay, so uh, NSC and IM seems to be more happier with this new interlocutor. Well, so why do you think they are? Yes, uh, Aryan Ravi, who was then, don't uh, get a interlocutor in 2014 and then in 2015 that peace agreement was signed between uh, Naga political groups and the uh, government of India. See, it is important to understand that uh, R.N. Ravi was picked by uh, NIA group, NIA. So he was there as interlocutor for more than uh, five years and despite having signed uh, peace accord in 2015, as I said, uh, Aaron Ravi refused to budge in with the demand of uh, plague and constitution for the state by the NSC and IAM. Since the NSC and IAM had stopped talking to Ravi, so they, they were not sharing good relationship, and mm -hmm. then the peace talk process was stalled for more than a year. So, uh, precisely, NSC and IAM was not very happy with this Ravi, and then they wanted someone else to left. So, uh, when uh, this AK Mishra was talking at the uh, uh, broker, they have been talking uh, for more than a year. So it seems they, have, they, are sh they, uh, they share a very good relationship so far. So NSIM seems more happier than uh, other s and MPGs and stakeholders of the Nagala political groups. So NSIM seems more happier. Okay, so how soon a uh, meeting is expected between the two? The, uh, the NSM IAM top guns, top leaders, they are already stationing there in uh, Chomigi de Monkey's house in today. And then NS, uh, IK Mishra arrived today this afternoon. 
So we can't just analyze uh, we just can't say uh, when the meeting will fall off, but uh, we are expecting a meeting very soon in a day or two. Maybe uh, tomorrow is Sunday, so I don't think it's very likely, but if not tomorrow, then the after tomorrow or Monday, meeting is very soon expected between the two groups. Okay, and how positive are you about this new interlocutor? Uh, it, it, it is not about being positive for uh, this, uh, new inter this new interlocutor. Uh, it is important to understand that uh, RN Ravi was picked by NIA, whereas this Akshay Kumar Mishra was picked by NHA, Ministry of Prime Affairs. So, uh, reportedly, uh, both PMO and then uh, Ministry of Prime Affairs, they both seems to be happy with this AK Mishra. And then AK Mishra seems to be holding a confidence of this uh, NHA and then PMO both. So, the positive side is he has a blessing of blessing of PMO and then uh, Ministry of Prime Affairs, especially the Amit Shah, the Home Minister. So the positive is that side, and then uh, he had been there uh, as a broker for more than a year and had been holding talks with NSNIM for more than a year since NSNIM refused to talk with Arun Ravi. So it is one of the positive side of uh, AK Mishra. But whereas, uh, in the other hand, uh, the seven NNPGs, uh, they are not seems very happy with this new okay. interlocutor. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so that is it. Okay, thank together. you so much. Thank you so much for providing us with the details and updates. So, even though it's not officially announced on the appointment of the new interlocutor, people of Nagaland and political leaders are optimistic that Naga peace talks will resume soon. And now, moving further, Captain Amarinder Singh resigned as the Punjab Chief Minister on Saturday amid the ongoing political tussle with Navjot Singh Sidhu was recently appointed as the Chief of the Congress Punjab Unit. The resignation comes less than five months before the assembly elections in Punjab and less than an hour before a legislature party, CLP, meeting called by the Congress party. The resignation was announced by the senior Congress leader's son, Raninder Singh, on Twitter. Addressing a press conference at the gate of the Raj Pavan, the 79-year-old said he felt humiliated. I called upon Congress President Sonia Kandi this morning and told her that I am going to resign. The, this thing is happening for the third time that MLAs are being called for a meeting. My leadership is being questioned, he said. Singh said that there is no plans for now to quit the Congress party, but future politics is always an option. He said that the future course of action will be decided after discussions with his loyalists. Political analysts say the move would hurt the Congress in the upcoming state polls. Ravindra Narayan Ravi, sworn in as the 26th Governor of Tamil Nadu on Saturday, he succeeded Panwari Lal Burohit, who has been appointed as the Governor of Punjab and Administrator of the Union Territory of Chandigarh. Chief Justice of the Madras High Court, Sandeep Banerjee, administered the oath of office to Ravi at an event held on the loans of Raj Pavan in Gundi. Chief Minister M. G. Stalin, leader of the opposition, Eta B. T. K. Palani Swami, ministers, judges, MPs, MLAs, diplomats, bureaucrats and others were present. While the Congress, left parties and the VCK did not attend the event, Tamil Nadu Congress Committee President K.S. Alagiri said that the Congress did not boycott the event and that he had been invited for the event but was travelling and hence could not attend. This place and the people have influenced and shaped to a great deal the very idea of India. I'm looking forward to be to the service of the people of Tamil Nadu to the best of my ability and the space that the Constitution gives me. Minutes after being sworn in as the government of Tamil Nadu, Ravi was asked about apprehensions among certain political parties that a former intelligence bureau officer was being made governor. Ravi said that the slate of the relationship between the governor and the state is absolutely new and clean. This effort will be to make it as beautiful as possible in the days to come. 
Paradia Janata Party BJP on Saturday named Union Minister Sarbananda Sonowal and Minister of State L. Murugan as its candidates for upcoming pipe bowls to Raja Sapa from Assam and Madhya Pradesh, respectively. Sonowal is the Minister of Sports, Shipping and Waterways and Minister of Ayush in the Government of India. He is also a member of the Cabinet Committee on Political Affairs and former Chief Minister of Assam. Logan Nathan Murugan is serving as Minister of State in the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying and Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. He was the State President of the Tamil Nadu Unit of the Paradia Janata Party. PJB has a majority in both states' assemblies. In Assam, a Rajya Sabha seat fell vacant after Biswajit Daymeri resigned to become the Assembly Speaker. In Madhya Pradesh, the vacancy emerged after the 10 Union Minister Tawarchan Kelot resigned following his appointment as Karnataka Governor. Union Minister of Labour and Employment, Environment, Forests and Climate Change, Pubender Yadav, has arrived in Imphal. After arriving at Imphal Bir Dikendrajit International Airport, he inaugurated the Naf Parad Mela at the JN Dane Academy in Imphal West District of Manipur. Pubender Yadav was received by Chief Minister N. Biran Singh along with Forest and Environment Minister Vungzakin Valte and Rajya Sapa MP Lesi Hempa Sana Jauba, among others. Secretary, uh, Secretary of the Minority Affairs and Information uh, and Department. Uh, the program that we have today is basically uh, uh, giving an idea to the people of what we are going to do in the coming weeks. We have a huge number of uh, exercises to be provided to maybe people falling under OPC, NCA, binding communities. We are going to distribute uh, next experience, we are going to distribute uh, fish finger links, uh, poultry chickens for uh, poultry hearing, we are going to distribute uh, bicycles to minority uh, students, brother uh, students, and other uh, uh, These beneficiaries are selected, selected on the basis of uh, various parameters and they are decided by the benefit and by benefit selected uh, 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 we are trying our best to ensure the uh, benefits actually reach the people. Mm. Several times in the past, we have had several complaints that uh, success provided under these programs are not of satisfactory quality. Uh, the benefits have to be chosen correctly and uh, so on and so forth. We are trying our best. We are making an impact, to make an impact that uh, this has been done with utmost transparency. The companies are here, they can, can be checked any time. And we want to ensure that the beneficiary goes from goes from satisfied. That's our target. How many In total, how many benefits? Total, we are uh, we are going to cover a little more than nine thousand beneficiaries. That is various programs, and a total cost would be a little more than six crores. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Saturday interacted with healthcare workers and beneficiaries of the COVID-19 vaccination program in Goa via video conferencing after the state completed 100% first dose coverage for its adult population. CM Pramod Sawant also participated in the interaction. Goa is playing an important role in the success of the world's largest and fastest vaccination drive, Subgo Vaccine Moved Vaccine. In past few months, Goa fought bravely against heavy rainfall, cyclone and flood under the leadership of CM Pramod Sawant, PM Narendra Modi said during his address. He added, I thank Team Goa for their work during such a time. Every eligible person in Goa has received a dose of vaccine. This is a big deal in the fight against Corona. Congratulations to all the people of Goa for this. This kind of coordination that Goa has shown to address social and geographical challenge is commendable. Modi further added that Goa's vaccine wastage prevention model will help matter parts, major parts of the country. Meanwhile, healthcare workers extended their greetings to PM Modi, who he celebrated his 71st birthday on Friday. Time limit for intimation of the ATAR number to the Income Tax Department for linking of PAN with ATAR has been extended from September 30 to March 31, 2022, said CBDT in a press release. The due date for completion of penalty proceedings under the Act has been also formed 
extended from September 30, 2021 to March 31, 2022, read the release. Further, the time limit for issuance of notice and passing of the order by the adjudicating authority under the prohibition of Panami Property Transactions Act 1988 has also been extended to March 31, 2022. That's all for now. For more news, keep watching Hornbill TV.